The Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn are just beautiful books. They will look great on your bookshelf if you needed a reason to buy them. This will be my spoiler-free review on the full series, The Faithful and the Fallen. Book one, Malice, came out in 2012 and is John Gwynn's debut novel. And because it was the first one, that means it's the worst one, but even the worst one is still good and they just get better as they go. This is a high epic fantasy series, so there is the expected amount of world building and character introduction and character development throughout each book and throughout the series overall. It can pretty much just be an understood fact that the bigger and more epic the series, the slower it can feel to start because there's just a lot to introduce the reader to between the world and the setting and the plot that's getting set up. And the plot for this story is in the Banished Lands. The god Elion is absent and the Ben Elam and the Kadoshim, which are basically the angels and demons of the story, are stuck in the other world, but they are trying to influence events here in the physical world. Not here, the Banished Lands. There are a lot of point of view characters. Some people might say too many, but a couple of the main ones are Corbin, the young son of the blacksmith, and Veridus, the friend and supporter of Prince Nether. The story surrounding Corbin is very typical in the fantasy setting. It's very coming of age, personal growth oriented. His journey to manhood includes a lot of training to fight, having to deal with friendships, enemies, just kind of how to deal with people in general, and of course with finding his own courage. And then you have the Veridus and Nether chapters, which are a lot more like political maneuvering, um, trying to gain friends and allies and followers for the thing that they are trying to do. These characters all want to rid the Banished Lands of evil, but the evil isn't always what they think it is, and they don't always have the same ideas on how to do that. The overarching story across the series has a lot to do with Azeroth, the devil, trying to influence things in the world the way he wants them to go to make happen what he wants to make happen, and the prophecy. The prophecy is set down by Halvor the Giant, and it speaks of the bright star who will lead Elion's armies to defeat Azroth, and the black sun who will lead Azroth's armies. The people of the Banished Lands, including the main characters and including all the kings and leaders are trying to pick sides. They want to know who this bright star is so they can follow him and wipe evil from their lands. There are lots of battles. They can get pretty grim and graphic, so I would not suggest this series for a younger or sensitive reader. It's not as grim and graphic as some fantasy gets, but it's pretty much as grim as I will go in my fantasy that I read. And to talk around this in a way that I won't get in trouble for just saying the words outright, there's pretty much zero adult content, but there are a couple instances of implied, off-screen, non-consensual interactions. It is very light on the romance. I know a lot of people try to avoid fantasy books that have romance included unless you are purposefully reading a romance novel. The romance that's there is well done, but it never really takes the spotlight or detracts from the plot that's going on. It's just kind of a little added extra. If you really lived in this world, there would probably be some people who liked each other and that's just how life goes. But it does contain one of my favorite romances, of all time. We have some animal companion stuff going on, and for a fantasy series it is pretty light on the magic. It's present, it's part of the world, but the story doesn't really revolve around the magical elements. So if that's what you're after, might not be the series for you. And I should probably talk about the downsides, the things that are not as great. One of the main ones is that there are too many point of view characters 
that are all too similar. Sometimes it's hard to remember whose point of view you're seeing from, especially if it's been several chapters since you saw them before, and there's not enough distinction between this strong male character who's good at fighting and this strong male character who's good at fighting and this strong male character who's good at fighting. All the female characters are very strong and brave and courageous. The characterization is well done. They're just a lot the same. To be fair, they all live in the same world and all have to be brave, but whatever. No book is perfect. Um, and there are a few too many fights or battles where at the last possible moment, a unexpected rescue happens. <laughs> unexpected for the characters maybe, not for us after you've read the first couple books because you're like, oh, it's okay. Someone will come save the day, it's fine. That does lower the stakes of the battles if you're just expecting somebody to get rescued, but it's also a series where a lot of people you have come to care about die. So you don't necessarily know whether they're going to get rescued or killed, but it did start to become a little expected. And the final like not as good thing that I have to say about it is that in my opinion it could and probably should have been a trilogy. It kind of felt like after the first book Gwen got the hang of what he was doing, got the hang of the story he wanted to tell, and then wrote three more books. Um, the first book, Malice, is like a long introduction to the story, and then the fourth book, Wrath, is like a long wrap-up to the story with most of the action happening in the middle two. And in my opinion, and I think a lot of people agree with me who have read it, is that the third one, Ruin, is the best one. So if those four had kind of been squeezed into three, I think the pacing would have been better and the payoffs at the end would have felt better. So they take a little longer to read than what might feel like is necessary. But overall, this is a book series that I enjoyed. I would recommend it to other fantasy readers. Um, they have kind of been a slow burn. When they were first coming out, they didn't immediately jump into popularity. They've been becoming slowly more popular as Gwyn puts out more and better books. People are like, oh, he wrote those other ones. I'm gonna go read those too. So I think they are a good and enjoyable read for fans of adult kind of darker fantasy books. And they're pretty and I think you should read them. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel for more fantasy bookish content. You can follow me on my Instagram which has a link in the description and I'll see you for some more videos later. Bye!